Welcome to another edition of the Morning Cup, sponsored by Kestrel Aircraft. Hi, this is Todd Lohenry, manager of digital and social media at Kestrel on day four of Oshkosh, and we're starting off with a bang today. I'm here with Todd Willinger, CEO of Redbird, and he's going to talk with us about what Redbird is doing in flight simulation. Todd? Well, thank you, Todd. That's easy to remember. Um, you know, you, as you look around here, we, we brought some of the traditional flight training devices that we have developed over the last couple of years, but there's a couple of um, new products that we have here. Um, one, uh, it's new, but it's the last time it'll be seen. That is a, um, a tie-in with the Disney Plane and Rescue, um, Planes 2 movie, that we did for uh, Disney. And while that simulator is only about two months old, it's got about 18,000 miles on it as it travel across the country. Uh, and then behind us, there is our um, rotor wing trainer that we have been, uh, it's been under development for about the last year uh, with uh, deliveries scheduled to, to start in uh, September. So we're really excited about um, entering that market and just having funds with the, with the planes device. Now I see you uh, also have a couple of aircraft here in your display. Tell us about that for a will, little bit. Well, sure. Uh, wh what you see over here in our booth is actually uh, the first customer's aircraft, our first production unit that will uh, ship on August 15th. This is a, um, if you will, a remanufactured uh, from the ground up 172 uh, with new avionics set, new interior, new paint, and a brand spanking new diesel engine. Uh, we, we unveiled that concept at Oshkosh last year, and now we're bringing the first production model here to the show. Uh, two of them uh, will be going to the Marine Military Academy in Harlingen, Texas, for their aerospace and, and flight training. Um, it's a fantastic aircraft. Um, you know, my hat's off to Continental Motors and, and what they continue to do in, in the diesel environment. It is the quietest single-engine piston aircraft you'll ever fly in. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where we occasionally move the, the, your headset off your ear just to make sure, you won't trust the gauges to make sure the engines are still running, you know, the lack of vibration, but more importantly, from a training environment, the simplicity of, of the use. So, you know, you're not going through mag checks, you're not worrying about leading, it's a push, it's a push button start, you give the throttle a go, and, and the FADEX system manages the, the rest for you. So from just a pure training environment. It, it takes some of the complexity out of the aircraft management so you can focus more on building the skills on teaching people to fly. From an outsider perspective, it looks like you guys have been wildly successful in this space. You want to give us your secret sauce and tell us where you're going from here? Well, I, probably the secret sauce is we didn't grow up in the aviation industry. So we came out of consumer product, uh, Pepsi, Dell Computer, th those sorts of companies. And so we, we, we really approach um, the development of our products in that way. And um, if you saw the Flying Challenge Cup Finals yesterday, you would also see um, you seen a demonstration of some of the technologies that we're now using to develop flight training curriculums. And so our, our intent out of this is that we're creating that flight school in a box, that so we can be that turnkey solution for any flight training organization from aircraft to flight training devices to training curriculums. And so um, that's, that's our model and that's where we see ourselves trying to lead the industry. Yeah, and where I see, I see that you're partnering with SAFE. We talked with them yesterday and uh, the, about the important work that they're doing. But, you know, from my perspective, what I see is that you're opening up aviation to more people because you're lowering the cost of the you know the time it takes to get your ticket. Well, it is. Um, again, you have to have the fidelity uh, in order to to adequately replicate that that flying experience. But you, you're right. Um, since the day we since the day we shipped the first device, we haven't changed our our pricing model. So our customers that bought unit one through five is the same price as our customers that have bought unit four seventy five to four eighty. Um, and that's very important to us to maintain that. We think. We love aviation or we wouldn't be doing this. And that's the interesting thing about this in industry. People, people are energized and they are so enthused about this. Well, we've got to do something around the cost model. And so we, we are continually looking at ways to drive down the cost of not only learning to fly, but also 
maintaining those skills to fly. You know, I don't know if you know, but last year we did something really nuts. And we do a lot of crazy stuff, but at our FBO, uh, at our Skyport facility in San Marcos, we had this 99 cent 100 low lead gas um, promotion. And, and the only thing somebody had to do to buy, purchase their fuel for 99 cents was to take a survey. And, and the data we collected out of this was unbelievable. But the most interesting thing was, of the pilots that flew in, if you took those that didn't have commercial, if you took the commercial pilot out and the, um, and the student pilots out, one of the questions was, how much time do you spend in training on an annual basis? And if this wasn't a rounding error, the answer was zero. And so what we, what we would like to do is try to do more towards the existing general aviation pilot population in some sort of, of recurrent proficiency and skills-based training on a recurrent basis, much like the jet pilots and the commercial pilots do. Um, because when we talk about safety and we talk about that sort of stuff, getting people and practicing things in an environment that they can do things they can't do in an airplane, we think is very important. And so that's where things like, um, you know, the proficiency program with SAFE and, and some of the work we do with NAFI and, and, and these folks. What IMC clubs, uh, we provided some devices for IMC clubs and, and uh, Jeppesen and, and EAA to put on a IMC proficiency training while here at, at EAA. And so those things are very important to us, and we'll continue to engage and try to promote those sorts of things in the future. That's great. That's great. Thank you very much. Now, if you want to learn more about Redbird, you can go and find them on the Internet at www.redbirdflight.com. And you can find our interview, along with a lot of great other ones, at themorningcup.net. Thanks for watching.